Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. And I have been so busy <laughs> with the uh, United States versus Kelly McDavid and Brown case that I have not had a chance to um, update you guys on the Tim Norman case. And so... I was going to do that because I knew that this case wasn't going to last long. And I believe that closing arguments are tomorrow. And so I'll do a video um, probably tomorrow or the next day. But in any event, I wanted to do this video today because Tim, with his narcissistic self, had the audacity to take the stand. So hold tight and I'll be back with what he had to say. Okay, so the article that I'm going to read to you guys, um, I closed out the window before I had a chance to write down what newspaper it was, but it's whatever the popular newspaper is in St. Louis, Missouri, is where this article came from. Um, but I've been following the trial since it started last week, and you know, some of the interesting things that came out, um, people were describing Tim as having lost like a hundred pounds. I don't know how much he weighed before he was arrested, but we know um, Tim had some hips and some thighs and some butt, but they say he has had a drastic weight loss. Um, he looked really stressed out. And um, they I know the first day they talked about the family was there, but Miss Robbie wasn't there. And the belief was that Miss Robbie wasn't there because she may get called to testify. I'm not sure, you know, if that actually happened because I haven't taken any notes from yesterday. No, I did get notes for yesterday. I didn't get any notes for today. And then I saw, you know, where Tim got up there and testified. Um, but the main thing in this case is that you guys know, I told you before, that the people, the insurance agent, the um, Terica Ellis, the girlfriend, stripper chick, um, Travell Hill, the one who actually pulled the trigger, they have all um, pled guilty and the insurance agent, and I'm not saying his name because I don't want to mispronounce it, but he actually um, pled guilty, not with the intention of um, turning, you know, states or federal evidence against him. He just pled guilty. He said, hey, I did it. You know, I, my part is my part. And he um, wasn't going to testify against him or anything like that. Um, I'm not sure if Travell or Terica would even qualify for a reduced sentence because the um, the penalty for what their involvement was was life in prison. So they don't get sentenced until probably a month or so from now. So we won't know what their sentences are. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into Tim, what happened today. And then, like I said, tomorrow or the next day, I'll come back with a full recap for the entire trial. And once again, I can't remember, I closed out the window before I could notate the website that this article came from, but I believe it is the main newspaper in St. Louis. And so it says, former, former Sweetie Pie star, James Tim Norman testified Tuesday as the final witness in his own murder for hire trial. He said he paid his nephew's rent and he said he enrolled him in school. Um, he painted the picture of a concerned uncle. And let me stick a pin here because I always forget that there may be people, you know, who just stumbled upon this video and have no idea what I am talking about. So there was a, there is a restaurant in St. Louis or maybe a couple of restaurants called um, Sweetie Pies. It's a soul food um, restaurant. And they were given a show on the OWN network, the Oprah, Winf 
Oprah Winfrey Network, and the show was titled Welcome to Sweetie Pies. And so the restaurant is owned by Robbie Montgomery, who is a former backup singer or dancer for, singer and dancer, I guess, for Ike and Tina Turner. And so Tim Norman is Miss Robbie's son, and he has been arrested and accused of plotting um, the demise of Miss Robbie's grandson, which would be his nephew, Andre Montgomery. And this happened back in March of 2016, I believe. And Tim was arrested in 2020, and he is just now going on trial. So um, it goes on to say, this is my brother's kid. So I tried my best to step in and be a father figure. Norman told the jury during more than four hours of testimony. I tried my best to show him right from wrong and tried to be a friend at the same time. So Norman, who is 43, is accused of orchestrating the 2016 death of his 21-year-old nephew, Andre Montgomery, and then attempting to cash out up to $450,000 in a fraudulent life insurance policy he took out on Montgomery before he was killed. Um, Norman and his nephew starred in Welcome to Sweetie Pies, a long-running own reality show about the popular soul food business um, Robbie Montgomery, Norman's mother, and Andre's grandmother founded in the St. Louis area. But Norman on Tuesday described a dramatically different story, saying he wanted to show Montgomery an example of success by running the family's restaurant. And so he go, it goes on to say, I just tried to show him you could make it doing regular stuff, Norman said through tears. Norman told jurors he moved his nephew back to St. Louis about 18 months before he was killed. He said he supported him by paying his rent and enrolling the young aspiring rapper in the Extreme Institute by Nelly um, Music School at Vatterot College. And so you guys know Nelly um, is a popular rapper, uh, probably not as um, popular today as he was um, a, about a decade or two ago. <laughs> trying to think Nelly might be my age. No, I think he's younger than me, but uh, very popular. And then the Wail Rabi Yagman, that Yagam, that's his name. That was the insurance agent. And he actually was the producer, I believe, on Nelly's first, first album. Uh, he's a music producer and connected to Nelly in some kind of way. So around that time, Norman said he took out a life insurance policy on his nephew to give a longtime customer of the family restaurants, Wail Rabi Yagnam, some business. Um, the agent, Yagnam, pleaded guilty to wire fraud in the case in July, but did not testify during the trial. So prosecution witnesses, including FBI agents, testified multiple insurance applications submitted by the agent and signed by Norman included false information listing Norman's number under contact information for Montgomery, overstating Montgomery's net worth as $200,000, and listing an address for a Sweetie Pie's restaurant as Montgomery's home. Um, prosecutors also presented, oh, let me go back, and they might say this later on in the article, but Tim wasn't the only one that had life insurance on on Andre, but I believe he was the only one that had life insurance on Andre illegally. <laughs> so Andre's mom testified on the first day of the trial that she had a policy out on Andre, but she had policies out on all of her children. And then Miss Robbie testified that she also had a policy out on Montgomery. And the reason she took her policy out is because they had gotten, you know, first of all, the average person listening to this video right now, your employer, if you have a job, your employer probably has life insurance on you that you probably don't even know about. 
And if you passed away today, your parents, your family, nobody would get a cut of it. So Ms. Robbie had this insurance and she said that it was basically because they had started the show on the own network and that, um, you know, these people were cast members of the show and they together made the show what it was. So if they lost one of the members, then that, you know, would have been aside from the fact that you're losing a family member, but then it also would have impacted the show. So um, her having the policy was for business reasons. It wasn't to line her pocket. So prosecutors also presented texts between Norman and the insurance agent. In one, Norman said he didn't want to talk about the life insurance policy in front of his nephew. But Norman responded on Tuesday that his nephew did know about the policy. He had attended a meeting to set up the coverage. Norman just didn't want him to know he could cash it out. In the second text, and then by cash it out, that means that if you put so much money into a life insurance policy, you can borrow against it. You can, um, you know, get the face value of not the face. Uh, yeah, I think the face value, which is basically what you put in there. So for example, if you took out a life insurance policy for $100,000 and you were paying $1,000 a month, then at the time that you wanted to take a loan against the policy or cash the policy out, then I think you get what you had actually put in and maybe some interest that's been added on it. You wouldn't get the full $100,000 if you hadn't put that in. That would only be paid um, to your beneficiaries after your demise. So it says, okay, that he had attended the meeting. And then it said in a second text, Norman told the agent Montgomery might not make it six months, bro. But again, Norman said Tuesday that he was just worried about Montgomery's safety. He was out on the streets at this point, Norman said. We were not seeing much of him. Norman also testified that life insurance applications had errors he would not have made like spelling sweetie pies incorrectly and having an age listed for his own brother who was killed years ago when his son Montgomery was an infant. Norman testified he cut his nephew off financially after Montgomery stopped attending school and going to work. Um, he said then um, disappeared. He said Montgomery then disappeared from St. Louis after a 2015 burglary at Robbie Montgomery's North St. Louis County home. At least $220,000 worth of cash, jewelry, and other items were stolen, according to police reports from the burglary. Norman told jurors his mother and he hired a private investigator to attempt to find his nephew then, but added he had no intention of hurting him. They still hadn't located his nephew when Norman told jurors he flew to St. Louis on March 14, 2016, the day Montgomery was killed. Norman said he made the trip as part of his regular stops at St. Louis to collect cash from Sweetie Pie's locations and do other jobs for the business. Once he arrived, Norman said he arranged to meet Ellis for sex at the Chase Park Plaza Hotel in the Central West End. Ellis testified for the prosecution earlier in the trial that in the hotel, Norman paid her $10,000 from a duffel bag of cash to trike Montgomery's location that day. But Norman testified on Tuesday that he only paid Ellis $1,000 for sex and another $2,000 to help her open a boutique she was trying to launch in Memphis. He admit admitted he did ask Ellis to help him find his nephew, but said he wasn't planning to hurt him and never paid her to do so. I told her, we've been calling all over the country looking for him, Norman said. I told her we were trying to get back my mom and I's stuff. Norman agreed with Ellis' testimony that she went with him to buy burner phones at a nearby Walgreens so they could communicate that day. But Norman said he had a fiance at the time, so would typically use burner phones to talk to other women. <laughs> oh, damn, come on. Now let's uh, stick a pee in here because let me tell y'all something. 
when those FBI agents and Homeland Security people laid out how they just tripe this man, like they just had them looking like the dumbest criminals ever. They talked about how these phones be pinging and how like when they had the burner phones. So Tim not only had the burner phone, but he also had his personal phone on him. And if you followed any of my previous videos, you know that Tim was putting up a ruckus about trying to get his personal phone back. And we was like, okay, why Tim? Why is it so important for you to get that phone back? Because these people already have everywhere you've been, every text message, every person that you called. And so on the day that um, the agents were testifying, they like laid it out all day long at 3.45, um, he pinged off of this tower. At 3 this, he pinged off at this time. He texts um, Terika Ellis and then she texts him back and this is what the text messages says. And it went on and on and on all day long while those agents were on the witness stand. So anyway, it says that, let's see, Norman's account contradicts state, okay. Let me go back up here. Norman agreed with Ellis's um, testimony that she went with him to buy the phones, but Norman said he had a fiance, so he was cheating and trying to cover up for his cheating. And then he didn't even throw the burner phone away when he, like before he left St. Louis, he took the burner phone back to California with him. So in his testimony, Norman said he connected Ellis with his friend Hill so that Hill could find his nephew that night. And Hill is Travell Hill, who is the one that actually um, pulled the trigger. So Norman said he wanted Hill to get the item stolen from his mother's home back, not kill Montgomery. He said he never paid Hill for the shooting and didn't learn he was the culprit until years after the death. Um, Norman's account contradicts statements from Hill who testified for the prosecution earlier in the trial. Hill told the jury he never directly spoke with Norman about the killing, but decided to shoot Montgomery after he was told by a mutual acquaintance that Norman would pay to have Montgomery killed. He admitted to then buying a gun from a friend, going to an address that Ellis sent him, and shooting Montgomery twice. A friend of Norman's, Daryl Howard, um, testified earlier in the trial that Norman told him to pick up $5,000 in cash from the Chase Park Plaza to deliver it to Hill um, a few days after Montgomery's death. Hill testified he believed the money was payment for the shooting, but also tried to take sole responsibility for the killing. Nobody else should be responsible for my actions but me, Hill said during cross-examination. I looked up to Tim as a mentor. Um, Hill pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder for hire in July and is awaiting sentencing. Um, Norman also addressed in his testimony phone records that show him speaking first with Ellis and then Howard in the minutes after Montgomery was killed. Ellis testified Norman told her on the call not to worry about the gunshots. He said he told her to go home, destroy the burner phone, and delete her Instagram account. Um, Norman denied, and then you guys should also know that your social media, just because you delete it, don't mean it's deleted, because they can um, pull it all your records back up. Um, these social media platforms are not your friend. So Norman denied the account, saying Ellis never mentioned that Montgomery had been killed when they talked that night. Uh, Robbie Montgomery attended court Monday and Tuesday during her son's defense, but declined to comment on the case. The defense originally intended to call her as a character witness, but prosecutors successfully opposed her testimony as not relevant to the case. Oh, okay, so then Miss Robbie did not testify. And I, I mean, how can they rule that somebody's testimony isn't relevant until the person actually get up there and say whatever it is they need to say? Anyway, so um, Norman is facing two federal uh, murder for hire counts and one count of conspiracy to commit wire and mail fraud. The tr um, trial is expected to continue Wednesday with closing statements. So guys, what do y'all think about Tim? getting up there and testifying in his own behalf um you know we were trying to figure out after everybody pled guilty why tim was still 
holding out. So Tim is holding out because he said he innocent. That um, these people um, misconstrued his conversations. Now I thought it was weird that Tim flew into town. Andre was taken out and then um, Tim got on the next thing smoking back to California. So I think that kind of make him look guilty. But anyway. I just wanted to bring y'all this update because we were wondering if Tim would take the stand, and he did. So, that's it for me. Go ahead, leave your comments below, rate the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.